Hey everyone, this is Jim Ramos with Men in the Arena. And last week I sent you a video uh, basically about all lives matter. I believe that. I believe all lives matter. I believe those 1.5 million babies aborted matter. I believe George Floyd's life mattered. I believe that all lives matter. I, but I've been educating myself. I've been sitting down having conversations with some of my black brothers. I've been reading books. Uh, we recently had Derwin Gray on the podcast. Derwin is a uh, an ex-NFL athlete, went to B Brigham Young University. He's a pastor of a great church in North Carolina. He's married to a white woman. And he has some great perspective in his book, The Good Life. And we had a great conversation about race and the theology of racial reconciliation. Now, I want to say this. In my garage, on the wall, I am flying a Don't Tread on Me flag. In my front yard, I fly an American flag. I own guns. I hunt. I have had my hands in the chest cavity of dead elk. I am a conservative American guy. But I'm a follower of Jesus before I am any of those things. I have not let my cultural upbringing or my political views impact or supersede my views of who Jesus is and how I live for him. So I've been processing this. I want to learn. Our country is in pain. People are angry. Other people are sitting back and they're, they don't understand. And I, and I have to confess my ignorance. I have said this. I believe this. I have coached kids of different color. I have played football with kids of different color. Right now I'm experiencing neck pain for blocking for four years of predominantly two guys. Both were black guys. Both were all league guys because I was in part blocking for them. And I did it with all my heart and I could care less what their color was. I am not a racist. But Derwin Gray brought up something really powerful. He said, that's not good enough. As a follower of Jesus, we should not tell people that we're not a racist. We should be anti-racism. And that was a good thought for me. That I, as a follower of Jesus, need to be anti-racism. I need to realize there's something bigger going on here. There's a bigger story that I need to engage in. I need to lean into it. Hebrews 10.39 says, We are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but in faith are saved. I want to lean into these problems. My son James just had surgery. He had a wakeboarding accident. He had four pins put in his ankle, one plate. I bought $100 worth of groceries. I took it up to the house, took the day off work, and I, and I was there with him just in case. Now, my other two sons could have said, Well, Dad, what's the deal? Don't we matter? Don't you love us? Well, of course I love you. But that one's hurt right now. Two months ago, my 24-year-old son, brought, Darby, bought his first house. So proud of that kid. We spent two weekends in a row going down. We helped him plant grass, get the, gra the, the yard ready for that. We helped him move in. I bought him a housewarming gift that every man buys a son who buys a house. A barbecue. <laughs> because I'm an American, right? And we have a barbecue. My other boys could say, hey, Dad, what's going on? Why'd you buy Darby a barbecue? What about, what about us? Well, because he really has a need right now. This makes sense? Football season's coming up in the fall. I have every Saturday blocked to go to my son Colton's games. No matter where he plays, one game's a can, we're going to go. My other sons could say, well, Dad, you don't go to travel with me to go do, see me. No, but that one needs us. So we address the issue at hand based on the wound or based on the need of that person. All lives matter. But right now, the, the black ones are hurting. And so, black lives don't matter more. They just matter. And they matter now. And as a follower of Jesus, I need to address the need and the wound of our culture. And I need to step in and be, lean in and be a peacemaker. I'm not interested in being a peacekeeper. That's a person who says, I'm not a racist, which I've been a peacekeeper for many, many years. But now it's time to lean into this and say, I'm a peacemaker. So have the conversation.
you may disagree with what I'm saying because I do believe all lives matter. I really, really do. But right now we have people in our in our communities, people who are our neighbors who are hurting. And I want to encourage each of us. And I, I'm about as far, I'm about as far right as they get. <laughs> But I want to encourage each of us to have the hard conversations. I was in the gym yesterday. There's a guy there, Ray. Ray and I have been working out in the same gym since 2003. Ray's a 40-year-old man, happens to be black. I said, Ray, can I talk to you about being black? He goes, well, how'd you know I was black? I said, well, <laughs> I could tell. So we had a good laugh, and I just asked him some questions. And he was able to educate me about what it's like for a man in the Northwest who is black. So I would just encourage you to have those conversations, to have them boldly, to have them in humility, to remove your cultural biases, to remove your political biases, and that, that if you're on the left or the right, remove them, and to have a conversation about what it means as a follower of Jesus to help our brothers and sisters of different color to find justice and reconciliation in the name of Jesus. So that's what I'm learning. I'm in process. Next week might be a different video, but I just want to be the best version of me on this planet and in this life. And our whole goal with the men in the arena is to help you, the man in the arena, be your best version. And if we allow us to be stagnant in our cultural uh, norms or stagnant in our political views, and not put Jesus in the front of all of it, we're not doing you a service. So I hope this helps you. I hope this creates some emotion. I hope this creates some knowledge. And I hope it creates some motion so that we can be our best versions for this world because when a man gets it, everyone wins.